public meeting to order for Monday, May 22nd for the City of Kingsburg Regular Finance Committee. I will start with uh, public comments. If there's anyone who would like to address the public, none. Uh, we will move to item three, which is the approval of the minutes. Uh, can I get a motion for that? I'll make that motion. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, item four, the fiscal year 24 solid waste and street sweeping rate discussion and recommendation. Presentation by Public Works Director Daniel Galvez. Uh, good evening, uh, Chairman Purcell, Finance Committee members. So, in uh, item 22, Council passed a uh, resolution approving the uh, Prop 218 rates uh, for solid waste, which include um, street sweeping. Uh, so, at that time, and as part of the uh, Prop 218 process, uh, it does allow for increases. Uh, for five years. So uh, the first increase took place in September, uh, soon after um, the resolution was passed. But we're approaching the time to approve uh, the future increases, which will take place uh, every July 1st from 2023 through 2026. Uh, so staff uh, has looked at the proposed rates and looked at um, the current revenues and expenses and uh, they're making the recommendation that uh, the finance committee approve the solid waste rates and sweep sweeping changes with a five five and a half percent uh, increase uh, from the September uh, 9th or September 1st, 2022 rate. So there'll be an increase of 5%. Um, we said when we looked at the rates, it looks like they're covering expenses, both current and future uh, as we expected. Uh, as we're putting the budget together for the next fiscal year, uh, we're making the assumption of the 5%, 5.5% increase. Um, and talking to Mid Valley, um, the CPI increase is uh, year to year for May to May, so we don't have that uh, actual number yet. Uh, but we do, we, we do anticipate uh, that it's going to be somewhere within that range. So. Um, Based on that information, like I said, we're making the recommendation of the finance committee to uh, the rates as proposed and here to answer any questions. Uh, committee discussion on that? Uh, just to follow up on the CPI increase, we usually get that in like mid June, um, but like we did in April 1, it was I think 4.9%, 4. 4. right? So it's not, it might be a little lower, a little higher, but we're suspecting that it will probably. And that's what they're going to charge us more. So yeah, so the contract that we have with Mid Valley is, is that they will take a CPI increase based upon those dates, and then they, they will apply it to the rate that they charge us. And we're sort of we sort of act as a pass through, right? So we collect the money from residents and businesses, and then they get the bill based upon that service. And so if they come back with the bill, you know, they come back with the increase is five percent or something like that. Then a little bit higher, which then basically each year we'll be having this discussion. It's like, okay, do we need to put that number? What's the correct amount to get to? And I think we're just based because based upon the fact that we increased in September and we only had higher rates for roughly nine months and we were already in a hole, that's to go with what the consultant started with or gave us at least the first year. And then when we come back, we do have to have those. High enough or not, or not high enough, uh, based upon what, what those actual revenues are. They're going to increase the rates to us July 1st. That's it. That's another one. It looks like, I mean, it looks like we're covering the cost. Yeah, we are, yeah, but our, and our assumptions in the, in the budget have uh, been to. <laughs> So when we adopted the budget in 23, we thought that there would be an, a, a deficit, but because it has, because we made the change and the, gotten back to the positive. But there is still a fund balance, uh, negative fund balance from years where it underperforms. Right, but the council decided not to pay back. 
much prior to me. Thought there wasn't the desire. Not pay back what? No, pay to increase the rate so much <coughs> to pay back oh. all the deficit. Uh, Correct, but I thought that was what. I don't know if that was. I know there was a higher amount that was proposed, and we kind of took a middle of the road approach. With right. It, but I can't remember what the okay. higher end was. That just made us whole sooner. I can't remember. I have to go back and look at that. It might have been way better. But we're also, there's going to be some increases in the Valley contract as well as some employee increases that we're expecting for next year. We have some employees that work in. regular operation billing mm -hmm. inserts that we send out and those are all <coughs> out of this solid waste thing. Yeah, the other committee discussion on that? <coughs> I think the other only other comment is just in future years, uh, like Alex mentioned, uh, like I said the council does have flexibility to increase it from zero all the way up to ten percent depending on inflation. So uh, I know when we first had this conversation, I don't think inflation was that big of an issue. It was a bigger issue. <laughs> so, um, something to consider as well, too, just as we, we kind of monitor that as well. Okay. Other council discussion? That's an action item. Are you comfortable with that amount? 5.5%. Well, you said your analysis came back you know, it's right around 4.9, and then it must be not closer to 5. If you want, you because you guys are making a recommendation, or this committee is making a recommendation to the council. When, does, when do we have to know what the number is so that we can make the change? I mean, in order to make it effective July 1st, we need to have uh, at least two weeks. So probably the first meeting. Back some other different percentage amounts based upon that, and then see what that looks like uh, from the council's perspective. That council can take action. If there is a half percent overages, where does that where does that extra money go? Could we roll that? That that extra money just going to hit back. So whether it's five and a half percent or five percent this year. It's going to impact next year. Mm -hmm. So if we do if we do five and a half percent and we are half percent over next year, if those same numbers come in at five percent, we can drop that number to four and a half percent because of the so it's not yeah we're, we're not overbilling yeah. and wasting. I, I don't want to pull money from the citizens and then spend it on something outside of this. The only thing as long as it's getting on that. Yeah. Personally, I'm comfortable with five and a half percent. If that's if that's where staff thinks we need to be. And I think that's what um, council has agreed. Not. Yeah, you guys have the ability to increase it from zero to ten percent. So that's how we wrote the prop two eighteen, so that it gave us mm -hmm. some leeway from year to year. I mean, yeah, you could have years because we did that, I think, for the water one year where <coughs> we delayed an increase for a year and then ultimately put it into effect. But ultimately, the council has. No, but I think we just hit a lot of people with limited income with a substantial increase during a difficult time. So, I mean, and given that we're taking in, have the ability to take increases every year, we could also be a little more conservative on the rates income for the future years. Uh, on the SB 13 to refront, uh, 
Power cycle has been pretty lax in terms of enforcement of that. Starting in 2024, that is going to wrap up. So having that extra percent, like I said, if, if we happen to incur any fines or any issues that way, like I said, there, there's going to be an education period. Like I said, we're getting ready to put a flyer together as well to kind of get that out there and work with Mid Valley to kind of start pushing that a little bit more. Um, but like I said, that those extra funds may come in helpful to kind of take out some of that uh, potential uh, fines that may come down the road in, in regards to enforcement. Let me come with a five percent count. See what goes for. I do agree with you. I have to percent. Huge difference. Someone asked you, you could tell them it could have been ten percent. <laughs> I think that realistically, years down the road, whether we choose five percent or five and a half percent, it's all going to end up balancing out because we have that service and ten percent variation. Mm -hmm. Just I don't know how much this year is going to matter. It's going to impact people. I understand that. But from an overall city finance perspective, I don't know how much. Don't know so, how so, so for the commercial, so kind of for example, like I said, I have the Excel sheet up here. So for like residential, 96 gallon, you know, a trash and organic, five and a half percent is 3420 dollars. At five percent, it's it's $34.03. So talking yeah. 17 cents. For some aspects, once you get into the commercial, sure. obviously that the mm -hmm. rates are higher, so the impact that half percent a little bit has a bigger impact. But for the day to day residents, we're talking 17 cents on that fee. For recycling, we're going from 324 to 322, so if we go to five percent, so I mean, it's depends for the most part. Um, I think for the street sweeping, it, it is one little bit higher, and we're, we're talking 42 cents. Um, five and a half percent, I'm assuming, or increase with the five percent. Majority of our residential customers being taxes. I mean, there's definitely an increase, but yeah. between five and five and a half percent. Uh, yeah, I need a motion one way or another. I'll make a motion for the uh, five and a half percent. All in favor? Uh, any opposed? Okay, motion carries. Uh, item five, the community facilities district update for fiscal year 23-24. Presentation by city manager Alex Anderson. Um, yeah, so thank you, uh, Chairman Purcell and members of the committee. Uh, this item is to discuss uh, the additional assessments that we have for new annexations uh, since June 7, 2017. Um, there are uh, each, each of our new annexations, whether it be residential, uh, retail, uh, industry, anything, there are rates uh, that have been adopted uh, by the council and something that happens each year with our uh, with the annual uh, budget approval. And uh, the CFDs, the community facility districts, act very similar to landscape and lighting districts, except that they cover uh, more, more eligible expenses, right? So landscape and lighting do just that, uh, where uh, these, this can cover police, fire, uh, administration, uh, landscape and lighting, like we're talking about, other, uh, really anything that is necessary uh, to uh, address these new annexations. So, uh, we have two zones. Uh, the reason that we have two zones is because of the uh, Summerlin subdivision. So the vast majority of our tax zones are uh, what's identified as a staff as part of the tax zone one. So think of the new, for the most part, what we've had has been housing uh, annexation. So um, the ones on Mendocino and the one on uh, 10th are paying that tax zone one rate. Um, Tax zone two rates uh, are higher, and we have only a handful of properties that are on the Fresno County side of the Summerlin subdivision. The Tulare County actually, uh, they have to 
approve the same thing that we have to approve, and then they collect the funds for the toll claim properties, and then they revert that money to us uh, because we uh, operate it like it's our own um, our own subdivision. Uh, but I can't show you those funds here because we don't personally collect them because it is a technical issue. But the discussion today is. Uh, it basically has the ability to increase the amount based upon um, uh, it's a blended rate. It's which was in our uh, original um, formation document. So basically, what it says is that specifically on July 1st and on July 1, 2018, the maximum special tax for the developed property shall be increased annually by the greater of the change. The blended consumer price index during the 12 months prior to December of the previous year, or 4%. Uh, so the December 2022 blended CPI was 4.9%. So we're just seeking input uh, with regards to what this rate should be, and specifically on tax zone two, so that we make sure that we get that information to so that they adopt something that's uh, equal to what we adopt. So what we didn't want to happen, right, is because you got some homes in Fresno County, some homes in Southern County you didn't want. You live on one side of the street, you're paying $1,488, and if you live on the other side of the street, you're in the same subdivision, you're paying $732. So uh, I, we've included some options so you can kind of see what that looks like for those properties. Uh, on, um, in the first uh, spreadsheet pages, so it just shows that at 2.5% and, and then the maximum amount is at 4.9%. We're looking for some direction uh, to take uh, on the full rate amount. And these are still a little bit in their infancy as well. So there's only a couple of them that are actually fully uh, built out to where we'll see the full revenue amounts. Uh, and so uh, there are some lower expenditures that we have right now. So I do think that there's a leeway for the, for the committee and the council to approve a smaller amount as it is. Um, you know, the only thing is you can go back, right, and get that those dollars. Uh, we don't spend all the money each year anyways. We divert uh, a portion of it because it covers things like roads, uh, road improvements, alleys, and things like that. And so, um, you know, there will be a fund balance that sits there for a handful of years for something like road repair, and then obviously there'll be a large expenditure that occurs that we tend to those subdivisions are paying their way for that as opposed to us trying to have to grab from um, our other shared funds, which includes my report, but I'm certainly happy to answer any questions. Uh, <clears throat> any discussion on this? So Tulare County will adopt exactly what we adopt for the Sunderland? Yeah, so, <clears throat> well, we're supposed to, but that's part of the MOU. Um, so when we first developed, well, we already had our own CFDs before Summerlin ever came along. And so then when we did the Summerlin one as part of the funding mechanism, we talked with them about uh, adopting the CFD. Uh, Summerlin was actually the first CFD that the county had ever done. And I think it's still the only one that they have. Um, and so they use the same uh, consultants that we use um, as well. And I had from last week and they said that they're working with county staff, planning staff right now to put all the documents together. And so I just want to make sure that it remains the same. I, what we have done historically since we've had this is that we, it's just been the maximum amount each year, which I think has been 4%. Um, I think we that's 4.9. Um, uh, first adopted it, but most of that probably has kept pace with what inflation is now. But it, it, as there are more subdivisions that we have and people moving in, and especially when tax time rolls around, people want to know what the extra assessment is on, on their property tax bill that um, go talk to their neighbor, you know, depending upon where you live, and they don't have the same assessment. And so, um, so we're working right now to try and really transparent within that fund to show what every subdivision is paying, right? So if you came in and said, oh, I live here, all your money is not just getting lumped. Like it's just not this $185,000 just sitting there, right? It's mm -hmm. being uh, 
allocated to the appropriate subdivision. So if you come in and say, well, I've been paying for my part to be up cap, we can show those expenditures and that's my subdivision. We don't have an expenditure in here, is it? Uh, I, I don't, I already yeah. know I missed it. No, so what's happened, what, there's no specific expenditures, so they're, they're finally is now, so just the way that we tr we have transferred money into the general fund from here, so like for example, to cover a portion of a police officer, right, because that's part of what this was for. Uh, we transferred some funding for lighting, right, so no legal lighting costs, things like that. What's happening now, though, is because when subdivisions finish, there is a period of time by which the developers are so require a warranty period to maintain things, and then after that, then it gets transferred over to us. And so, just from a timing standpoint, we're starting to see, like I think now, the print law one is on. We have a contract. Have a, contract. a contractor to service the park and the walkways. Mm -hmm. uh, we have the, the Crick Myrtle Street and Drayfin. So I mean, like that's already like a new expense that right. not shared for the general fund. It's going to be hit that specific account for that uh, subdivision. Yeah. So the, you know, from an expenditure standpoint, we're not, we are, we have not been spending at all. But part of that's been because a, it's a timing component too, because you have to pull a permit by May 1st in order to get on the tax roll for the next year. And so, in the first, you know, as they continue to build out, you know, there's a there's a delay in when we actually see the funds come to us. Um, and we're still working through what some of our, what what it will what the true cost will be for us. So. You know, like Public Works is doing a lot of the work internally at Summerlin, like they're maintaining that park. Okay, you know, so Daniel's established, like, this is how many hours a week we're spending there, this is what our fully, fully burdened rate is. Um, so we can appropriately charge the, this account, you know, even though we have to transfer monies over just because you're being, the work is being done by an employee who's technically paid out of another account, maybe paid 100% out of the general fund. So we're just making sure that we move the, uh, again, if somebody comes in and it's just like, well, we're going to get spent out of, we can all that. And all the money together. But so right now, there's, yes, it's, funds are in a good spot, but um, there's going to be, we're going to be taking on their fair share of like actual personnel here too, like mm -hmm. fire. So, and their and larger amounts will be part of big year expenditure. Well, each year there's a new levy amount, right? So, you know, when you adopt the budget in June, there's a CFP resolution that the council approves that indicates what the amount will be for the next fiscal year. And so, your last year was at 4%. So this year, the option is you can go up to 4.9%. We're just showing some different ones so you can kind of see what the difference is for those homeowners. So 2.5% goes from like an $18 increase, 4% is a about a $30 increase, 4.9 is about a $36 increase for tax level. I'm curious what your thoughts are on this. On my experience with uh, landscape and lighting, we have some that have a and I can see every year what we can, and some just don't. Between why some have a Increase and some don't. And thinking with the citizens will be hard if they compare. Except why? I think you're watching someone. They're going to have that fight. So what you're saying is that 4%, if it was 4%, we'd be getting 4% across the board. Well, 
for any delay, like if we uh -huh, if we decide four point nine, it will be will be beneficial for the budget for the intent of the CSD using public safety and also uh keeping up with the utilizing those uh, expenses more from the CSD. I will like that. So what would your recommendation be? Um, so you can drop them as a bad idea. So we know we have bridging and two control. Hopefully some fire, right? We can stop that is going to be there summer. Do we look at actuals and then project? Yeah, uh, so for Summerlin there's an actual formula that's based upon the fully burdened rate of police and fire officers. Um, so we Essentially, trying to there's a number in the actual uh, formation document that shows a percentage split uh, that the funds can be for, and so that's generally you know it's not a hard and fast rule, but when the council originally approved the CFP, they approved it based upon those types of pieces, right? So you know what's the cost of a if all of a sudden PG needs rate goes up because if we're lighting, then that's going to change from year to year, and you're going to have to adjust that based upon what the available funds are. But um, there's not a hard and fast formula for how much a police officer spends in a neighborhood. Basic thought is that public or property taxes don't keep up at two percent with what the cost of you know benefits for cost for maintaining these areas are, and then. The reason tax zone two is so much higher is because you don't get the property or the full property tax amount, right? So in Fresno County, you're building a new house, we're going to get the benefit of not only the CFB amount, but also the property taxes that go with a Well, lots of them that live over there don't even know that they don't want to think yeah. they're proper, so, but yeah. <clears throat> Which is sometimes a challenge. Well, and the county gets the benefit of having new housing and a higher increment on the amount that they do collect. Really no responsibility to us or how the MOU worked out. And all the guys that are going to participate in the increased population. With the rising cost of energy, um, I think we can compare to go with the four point nine if you end up with some um, balance and we can look at trying to drop it lower, but we still don't have a I mean, that fund balance is important. I mean, just to kind of give you guys an idea. Yeah, so like Road 16, eventually those trees are going to grow. They're going to need tree trimming where city staff is not going to be able to do it, and we're going to need to contract some of that work out. Mm -hmm. So you're probably looking somewhere in the you know, five to $8,000 range to get all of those trees trimmed. Um, and so you're going to want to have that kind of on a consistent basis where it's like if you want to keep it, then, you know, where we struggle with that. And, on Bethel and River Johnson because the rates there have not changed since the implement so it stays the same. The amount that we collect is in every year. Um, and so we don't have that money to do that full maintenance on it. So it takes time from other locations for us to kind of cover those costs. So as we take the new areas on, we just gotta be cognizant of not just the expenses now, but what we're seeing in two, three years, uh, four or five years down the road is bigger expense tickets like eventually the splash pad's going to need a new timer or a new pump uh, or a repair or 
burn the those aspects, and those are all going to either come out of that uh, PFD. Okay. You said that um, the uh, um, CFD double letter for Johnson has a town map. Is that just because of the way it's written? Yeah, so, so those are landscape and mining districts uh -huh. that were developed in like the 90s. And some of the ways that they originally formed them back then, they did not have an escalator. So no CPI increase or anything like that. So the only way that we could go back and increase those is you have to do a Prop 218 and get all of those people to vote for it. So that's why when you do annexations now, you do we, we condition them uh, as initial approval because there's one owner, right? There's the developer who knows that I'm not going to have to pay this. So it's going to get passed on to the people who buy the houses. So they sign the document, they, it's how it gets formed, and then basically you're buying into that once you buy into that community. And but um, yeah, so you know, some people still pay seventy-two dollars a year that they paid starting in nineteen ninety-three, and they're still paying seventy-two dollars a year, right? So it's better than nothing. It's better than not having anything on it that we have to deal with, but doesn't doesn't address the things that we're talking about. So, and I think it's just good that we're just having this conversation at all because if somebody comes in and asks, like, okay, why did you decide to raise my rate? The money for these tracks is it stay in fund for these tracks or is it spent in other places? We have a separate fund for CFD and we are seeking the revenues and expenditures by fund by uh, track number. Okay. So, yeah, so the vast majority are staying there, so we do transfer some funds, like for example, like Daniel's going to be, his group is going to be doing. Landscaping work for Summerlin, and they're already being paid out of a general fund account. Like, we'll just transfer some funds and cover that so that the general fund is made whole, right? So that we're not having to, from an administrative standpoint, have to grab a bunch of yellow lines and say they're getting paid out of 15 years. You know, that's just more internally for accounting purposes, but yes, the, pump, the funds are being spent on what they're legally allowed to. Interest 
return on that investment was 53,684, and the effective date of earnings was April 14. The difference on that uh, interest earned is around 33,000. And um, you said the pools operate in the same way. So California class first term to medium securities portfolio offers the opportunity to optimize interest earnings while not sacrificing safety or liquidity of the fund. So given that those recent uh, returns, we will be transitioning additional investment into California class to maximize the fees interest return and uh, this item is just informational only will probably be including the uh, investment report quarterly and taking it to council uh, compare both uh, pools and just to give an idea uh, we set aside half of the investment into California class and we let them Sitting there, but with names we transfer from and to anyone higher than California class and it's one lower than the order that we had in California class and they went as high as give an idea of nine million. Uh, currently that's the the total that we have in late. So that's the, the one that I we utilize to move money back and forth. But um, we uh, wanted to report and realize that the interest earned during the and probably will be bringing it to finance committee every quarter from now on. I'm happy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm happy with what we're doing. Take more money. And just want to make sure that you, you're okay. <laughs> See the difference in you. Yes. I mean, yeah. Mm -hmm. you know. Thank you. 